Hi, I'm Linda Mao, and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the McNay Art Museum and speak with curator Renee Paul Berrio about the museum's exhibition, Beauty Reigns, a Baroque sensibility in recent painting. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm Casey Shambaum here with uh, Renee Paul Berrio from the McNay Art Museum. We're here at the exhibition for Beauty Reigns, a Baroque Sensibility in Recent Painting. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you, I'm glad to have you here. Well, so we're standing in front of Jose Alvarez's piece, and this is actually from the McNay's collection. Correct. So um, I guess, did that have a, a focal role in developing the curation and the flow of the exhibition? You know, it's interesting. There, there are 13 artists in this show, and um, I had already identified all the artists some time ago. And so we were thinking about uh, an acquisition to make for the museum for our contemporary collection. And every year our contemporary art interest group makes an acquisition. So I thought, well, let's, let's buy something that we can include in the show. So actually the show is in development first. And then I thought, well, let's get a work by an artist in the show uh, so that we have a connection there. So actually the work came after. Okay, well, it's fantastic. And then if you wouldn't mind going into, I guess, what defines Baroque sensibility in the more modern term as opposed to the post-Renaissance term. Sure. And so what I'm thinking of when I say Baroque, I'm using Baroque with this lowercase b, not Baroque with the capital B. So not the movement, not the historic movement, but the idea of uh, visual excess, theatricality, uh, uh, visual effects, um, a sense of um, awe in something that's inspiring. That's, uh, and I like to also throw in the word optimistic. Um, I mean, each piece you could probably stare at for 20 or 30 minutes, there's so much to see. Which brings me to Ryan McGinnis's work, right. who he introduces the show in the front room, right. and there's, uh, I guess, four or five large there, pieces? There's six, six oh, works all together. And so why choose that one to open the show? Well, I knew from the very beginning I wanted Ryan's work to introduce the show, because um, it's so much connected to contemporary culture. I mean, it's so seductive, and his use of uh, contemporary logos and contemporary kind of iconogra iconography that I knew that was like the way I wanted to create um, a sense of falling into the show in a sense and so I gave Ryan the space and he he uh, suggested these six paintings which we borrowed from collections all over the country some came from his studio but some came from private collectors one came from a museum collection and it really he was really thinking about this immersive experience that you would walk into, essentially walk into his paintings, which well, I really love. It's not a shy opening. <laughs> no, so not at all. Once you walk into that room, you know what you're getting yourself into, right. which is really just stunning work. Right. So the 13 artists total in right. the exhibition, and they really are coming from all over the world. Uh, so what does that add to the dialogue between all the pieces? Well, I mean, it's interesting because when I, you know, I started thinking about the artists and when I, the, when I identified the group I wanted to show, I didn't, I didn't know if there, there were existing connections between them. So, uh, you know, one was born in Korea, lives in Atlanta, one's born in Iran, lives in Brooklyn, one's born in Philadelphia, lives in Philadelphia. I mean, there was just, it was just interesting geographically, they were spread around, culturally, they had different kinds of, um, you know, they came from different cultural backgrounds. And then I start, there was, I start to find out that some one of the artists taught two of the other artists, or one of the artists has always been a fan of this other artist. So they have, the artists have these connections, but I hadn't seen anybody put that together. Well, it's interesting to see that they have these commonalities, and with, uh, I think it's Jihan Moon, mm -hmm. she's from South Korea, and she does have similar aesthetics to somebody on the total other side of the world, right. so it's definitely interesting. And, and that's a good example, because Jihan in particular, you know, is, is, is a younger, one of the younger artists, and she's also totally, you know, connected through the internet and global, so there's the idea of globalism, it's just, it, it, everything's, you know, everything's simultaneous, everything's concurrent, everything's happening at the same time. And there's no way you can separate yourself from that, you know, and so she just pulls anything she needs to make that work. And now everything is so readily available that you can be easily influenced. That's right, that's right. So we're standing in front of this Rosalind Schwartz piece called Big Perfume. Mm -hmm. I know it's one of her older pieces, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know as far as the sequence of the exhibition, uh, how this one came to be positioned here, and its placement as far as being a little bit more direct, uh, figuratively, right. compared to some of the more re repetitive and ornate pieces. Well, one of the characteristics that I saw 
kind of that re re the recurring characteristic was something representational or realistic that would slip into the work. So whether where the, the idea is that these are abstract paintings, you know, there's often some specific reference that some of the artists would bring into the work. So in Roslyn's case, she was looking at photographs, and this is a photograph of a perfume shop, a perfume shop. So she's kind of creating something that looks sort of like these two big perfume drawers. And then there's some kind of almost architectural kind of space they exist in, but then there's a lot of abstraction going on around them. So she's melding uh, some, that's, something that's realistic or referential to something that's abstract. And, I saw, and that was a characteristic that I saw over and over again. I think hers is probably the most overt. And so did you keep this piece in mind as you were laying it out as kind of a breather, along with the Annette Davidek pieces that are a little bit more direct and floral, uh, as kind of a preparation for the next phase of the exhibition? Well, because of the way our galleries are, are kind of designed, which is, which I always call a, narr a narrative space, you walk through, I can tell a story, and that story can get punctuated with paintings like this, where it's a pause, it's a break, it's a little reminder why we're here, it's a little anticipation of what's to come. So paintings, isolating this painting is sort of like, oh yeah, there's still some representational imagery here, but it's not what this is all about. So here's something that's representational, but there's that whole frothy thing going on over there, and there's those abstract lines, and then there's this weird pattern. So it was like, okay, it's a little bit of a rest. Well, all of the artworks are really phenomenal. I'm gonna have to go through again myself a little bit slower, and I'll definitely keep an eye out for some of the specific artists as their careers continue to develop. So thank you so much for speaking with thank us. You. I really appreciate it's it. It's been a pleasure. We want to thank Renee for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to mcnayart.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar.